Now, before we get started creating new transactions inside of Wave, I want to talk about your prior transactions. So, if your business has been around for a while, it has likely already incurred some transactions. You have income that you've already received, expenses you've already incurred, your bank accounts already have balances in them, and those aren't in Wave yet. Now, if there aren't many transactions, your business hasn't been around a while, then you may be able to go into Wave and just recreate all of those transactions. And I'd recommend that if there aren't that many because it will give you more detail and more accuracy in your financials. But if your business has been around for several years, then we don't want to have to go back all those years and recreate them all. So WAVE gives us the opportunity to enter in what's called beginning balances, where we simply state one dollar amount on a certain date that sets the beginning of our balances inside of WAVE, and then we create new transactions from there forwards. So if your business is brand new and your first transactions will be in WAVE, then this video may not be useful to you and you might want to skip it and move on to the transaction creation videos that will follow. But if you have been around for a while and you want to create beginning balances, let me show you how you do that in WAVE. To create your beginning balances in WAVE, we'll need to go to the accounting page uh, here on the left. And then if you remember from our accounts video, this is where we went in to create our chart of accounts. And if you look up at the top, you'll see that there is an account balances tab in this screen. So let's go ahead and click that. So this is the account balances page. And this is where we'll be able to create our beginning balances for WAVE. To do that, we we'll want to first enter a description for the transaction. And it can be something as simple as beginning balances. And then we we'll want to choose a beginning balance date. Now the beginning balance date could, I guess, theoretically be today, but I would recommend going back and setting it on a fixed close. So usually when we're creating beginning balances, we'll choose a bank statement ending date. So go back to your last bank statement and choose the ending date from the bank, from the bank statement, and then set up all of your beginning balances as of that day, and then you can enter transactions from that date to today. So for example here, uh, my date's 724, so we're nearly at the end of the month. I may just wait until July's statement ends, enter my beginning balances in the end of July, and then get a clean cut into August. Or I could go back to June 30th and enter my beginning balances then, and then simply recreate all the transactions from June 30th to today. So let's say that that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to back up to June 30th and call that my beginning balance date. Now in this section below, all of our accounts in our chart of accounts are listed and we have the option of adding in their beginning balance values in either the debit or credit columns. So this is one of those areas where understanding the difference between a debit and a credit will come in handy. If you have not watched our debits and credits video um, prior to this one, then I would recommend going back and reviewing that so that you get a better understanding. However, WAVE understands that many of its users are still learning debits and credits and are not as comfortable with that concept yet. And so they've helped us by putting zeros in whichever column would represent a positive number for each of your accounts. So as you can see, accounts receivable is an asset which typically has a debit balance, so there are zeros in the debit column. Your accounts payable down below is typically a credit balance as a liability, and so the zeros are in the credit column. So that makes it very easy for you to fill in the amounts for your beginning balances, even with very little knowledge um, in debits and credits. So if you want it to be a positive number, put it where the zeros are. If you want it to be a negative number, put it where the blank is. And then you should be all right. Another tip that I would have for you as you're creating your beginning balances, I know that accounts receivable and accounts payable are listed here. However, I wouldn't recommend putting in a beginning balance number for those two accounts here. If someone owes you money, you want to know who that someone is. And here in the account balances window, all I can do is put in an amount. So what I would do instead is skip those two fields and enter in your invoices or bills individually backdating them to when they were actually created so that you have the detail you need and it will make it much easier to receive funds against those invoices or pay against those bills later on if you have that level of detail. 
So in our following videos, you'll learn how to create invoices and bills, and that's how I would handle accounts receivable and accounts payable. So we'll go ahead and skip those for right now. And instead, we're going to go down and add the beginning balances for our other accounts here. So if we look at the second row here, accumulated amortization, let's say that I just have, you know, maybe $200 in accumulated amortization. My machinery and equipment is $2,000. Let's say cash on hand, maybe I have 50 bucks. In my savings account, maybe I have $500. And I can just go down this list one by one and enter in each of these transaction amounts. And you can see here that all of your balance sheet accounts, your assets, liabilities, are all at the top of your account balances window. And then down below are your income and expense accounts. And at the very bottom, you'll find your equity accounts. So that's kind of how it's set up as you're looking for the different accounts that you want to enter in. Let's say that our consulting income is $1,000 so far. And just for fun, let's say that our product sales is negative because we received a refund on them. I wouldn't want to put in a negative in this field because again, remember with debits and credits, negative numbers don't exist. So I'd actually go into the blank field and type a positive $100 there and that would represent negative sales. So remember if you're looking for a negative, put a positive number where there's a blank and that will generate a negative number in your reporting later on. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in the rest of these really quickly so that we can get an idea of how it looks. So now you can see I filled in all of my assets and liabilities and I've put in all of my income and expenses. But as you'll recall from our debits and credits video, in all transactions in, in accounting, debits always have to equal credits. And down at the bottom, Wave is telling us that we have a problem because there's $300 less in debits than there are in credits. So something has to be done to fix that. Now, if you've gone through all of your assets, all of your liabilities, all of your income, and all of your expenses, and it still doesn't tie your debits don't equal your credits, you're probably normal. Most businesses are that way because you have equity. Equity is the amount that the owner actually owns. And so whatever's left over at the end of the day is going to be equity. And you'll usually have a number that you'll force into the equity section to get things to balance. So when you get to the bottom, go ahead and go through them one more time, just review them really quickly, make sure everything is accurate, and then whatever is left over just put in this owner's equity section here. So I'm going to put a number into owner's equity to tie our transaction out. And now you can see our debits of 6,200 equal our credits of 6,200, and we are ready to save this transaction. So let's go ahead and save it. And now we have a beginning balance journal transaction that was created by Wave to give us a starting place to enter in all of our new transactions in Wave, which is what we'll learn in our upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the Bootstrapper's Guide to Wave Accounting. If you found this video useful, I encourage you to click the like button below, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and share this video with other entrepreneurs. Doing so will help us to continue creating more videos like this one for you and other Wave users here on the Accounting Lab.